third podcast in your way. This is episode 378, compound episode, guys. Remember, the even episodes are compounds, the odd episodes are Q&A. Steve Smee here and the Rickster. What's up, buddy? Hey, what's up, Steve? What's up, guys? How's everybody doing out there? So in this episode, we're going to talk about females. This is going to be females. All you guys listening to this, this is going to be for you to gain knowledge. So you, your current girlfriend, future girlfriend, they want to kind of get into PEDs. They want to improve themselves. Um, it seems like every girl I date, uh, she wants, she becomes obsessed with fitness because of me and, you know, that kind of rubs off on her. So this is a good opportunity for you guys to gain your knowledge. Female listeners, this is the only podcast I'm aware of that we're actually going to cover your stuff, female from top to bottom. And we're going to talk about everything regarding female PEDs, best steroids to use, best SARMs to use. So, you know, let's hit it. Rick, um, the first one we're going to talk about is Anavar, Exandrolone. This is the most common anabolic steroid for females to use. So um, Anavar is a dry compound. It's got low side effects. It doesn't cause the viralization if you run it properly that other steroids do. That's really the good part of why a lot of females like to use it. The bad part, though, Rick, is that it's heavily fake. So if you do choose to use it and you report back some bad things that happen to you, there's a good chance that you were using fake Anavar. So you want to make sure you always use top quality Anavar from a trusted source. So if you come on the forums, you'll be able to find a trusted source. And um, if you... So many horror stories over the years from from women who have run fake Anavar, and it's really been something else. And you don't want to do that. So make sure that you run it. But um, I'll bring in Rick early on this. But look, the dosage, if it's your first time running it, five milligrams a day is completely okay. You can go up to 10 milligrams a day. Some women run it even higher. But I think five to 10 milligrams a day for a woman, let's say a six, seven, or eight week cycle is fantastic. Um, and you'll have tremendous results on that dosage. And, and you know, things where women are reporting is they're reporting really good strength gains, really good lean muscle mass, and, and really, really good fat loss too. Um, so there's, you hit the trifecta with Anavar, and it's a really, really good steroid and really the side effects, if you run it properly and you're getting real Anavar are, are very low. So, you know, it's even, it's low for men. Men usually run Anavar 40, 50, 60 milligrams a day and report very little to no side effects for women. It's the same way. Probably the only side effect that's most obvious, and this is true of anabolic steroid use is the liver effects, the kidney effects, uh, those, those are very real side effects. So you want to make sure you're running your liver support, your Tutka, your Intuguard. Uh, Intuguard already has liver support, uh, seven or eight different supplements within Intuguard are for the liver, including Tutka. It's got kidney support as well. So anytime you run anabolic steroids, even if it has low side effects, it's still going to put pressure on your liver and your kidney. So uh, very important to use your support supplements when you're on it. And don't run the N2 guard near the Anavar. That's something that you mentioned before, Rick. Um, so tell us a little bit about that and tell us your thoughts on Anavar for women. Pros and cons. So when it comes to Anavar for women, it's the only steroid that I advise any females use. It's actually very mild. Doesn't really cause a lot of hair growth. Doesn't really cause a lot of problems with thickening of the voice. The only real side effect that some women will experience on Anabar is it could thicken the skin a bit. Maybe make some acne a little bit worse. But it's probably that one that most women will be able to use. Get incredible results from it and not really have any bad side effects. Unless you're like a female competitor and really stepping on stage and you need to just look a lot better in single body, single digit body fat percentage compared to the other girls, you might not need anything else. You might be able to just do anavar cycle after anavar cycle 
and be fine on it. I've known some fitness girls that have stayed on Anabar five to 10 MGs a day for months and months and months. At that dosing, five, 10 MGs, you're not beating up your liver as bad. It, even though you're a female and your muscles and other tissues in your body can only take so much androgens before they begin to change and you become more masculine, when it comes to your liver, definitely your body can handle five, 10 milligrams of methylated steroids longer than it could without severe damage, longer than it could doing 40, 50 milligrams of the same steroid that we a man would. So obviously you can, as a female, run the cycle a little bit longer. And the same con concerns when it comes to post-cycle therapy are in there. Definitely use N2Guard and the number two guard, G-U-A-R-D, N2Guard.com. If you're going to use Anavar, make sure you protect your liver by using N2Guard. That'll definitely, it's a must. But it's just a good steroid, women, at the doses that women use, you can run it way longer. Side effects are pretty mild, except for some females will experience their skin will look more textured, a little bit thicker while they're on the, on the Anabar. Anabar was prescribed to burn victims. It does have an effect on your skin. Very profound, too, if you're prone to that side effect. If you already have some guy, you know, if you already have larger pores in your skin, during the time that you're taking the Anabar, you'll notice a bit of a change there, maybe a, a bit of a, of a rougher texture, you know, especially if you're slamming, you know, sun on top of that to, to darken your, your skin tone, you'll definitely notice some of those side effects. What's interesting but, is I actually read a thread today from a female who said she had acne issues and she used Anavar and acne issues went away and she, she wasn't sure why. So that's interesting that you said that. Why do you think that happened? It'd be different things, you know, maybe her hormones, natural hormones before the Anavar were leading her to get some acne issues and the Anavar somehow stabilized that. But you mentioned skin. Yeah. Yeah. Skin connection. So you think it, it could have improved her skin in this particular situation? In her particular case, it could have improved it. Yes. In maybe other cases, it could make it worse. But Anavar has an effect on this on the skin. Very profound. It was my, again, prescription for for some burn victims uh, it does does help it, the skin and um so again some people might see their skin worse and not not like the effects it has other people might see an improvement from it it really depends on your genetics and what condition you are having before you started using the drug all right guys so the second one is oral primobolin for females this is a very popular one as well and a diff in primobolin, you can find it in injectable and oral. I've had female clients who have used injectable, but I'm always, you know, first to put them on the oral. And, I, and I'll tell you why. The oral primobolin is not liver toxic, and it doesn't absorb very well. So it's safer because there's low absorption with it. So it's much weaker than the injectable just for that reason. So females using oral primobolin, they can run it. They don't have to inject, which is a big taboo. Um, I, I know it freaked me out if I walked in on my girlfriend and she's injecting steroids. It would freak me out. But if she was taking the oral, it wouldn't freak me out. So if you have a boyfriend or something or a girlfriend and having needles around the house freaks them out, it's just kind of like a taboo thing. So I completely understand this. But oral primobolin, you know, there's, there's been really good reports out of it. And the results are similar to the Anovar. Um, it's, it's similar to the Anovar and even less side effects than the Anovar because like I said, it's not liver toxic. So you may experience even less issues on it. So uh, it is kind of expensive. I mean, you can buy a blister of 15 tabs and that's going to cost you over a hundred bucks and the tabs are 50 milligrams per tab. So it's not, it's not cheap. So let's hypothetically in this situation, let's say you spent like 100, 120 bucks and you got 15 tabs at 50 milligrams. You cut those uh, tabs in half, that's 25 milligrams. That'll last you a month. So, um, you know, it can get kind of pricey. 
you're ca- you're talking a little over a hundred bucks uh, for a month's worth of Primo Bowl, and, and you can run it, let's say eight weeks, and it would cost you, you know, that's not too bad. Anovar is, you know, is for for a female dosage. Anovar would be a similar similar price. Um, if you, you know, I can kind of look at the the Anovar prices. Um, Anovar can cost you more money, like a hundred tabs of Anovar at ten milligrams a day. Is hundred is 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 almost two hundred bucks, so you know it's it's pricey. They're both pricey um, for sure, but those are really good options for females. So I think some of the results with with females at that dosage, running twenty five milligrams a day, you can get some really really good results. Rick, um, very similar to the Anavar, uh, some some low sides, uh, some strength improvements for a female. It's going to be strong i wouldn't recommend oral primo for a man because it's so weak but for a female it's just the right amount of strength to to really give you good results Um, lean muscle mass you'll get some fat Um, you'll notice maybe you you get more cut on it is it is it like actually burning fat on your body no of course not it's not directly burning fat but it will make you look more cut and more lean because of what it kind of does in the body when it comes to giving you that sharper and harder look so i think um oral primo is one that a lot of women kind of don't do anymore i think five years ago rick 10 years ago oral primo was one of the most popular steroids for females and now you barely hear about it so and and but uh, uh from the female clients that i've i've dealt with they really really enjoy it they have really, really good results. So, um, you know, I think it's a good option, oral primo for, for females. It looks, looks really good. What do you think? Well, primo, when compared to Anabar, which we just discussed, it's going to have some side effects that you won't really see with Anabar. For example, oral primo or primo in general, even injectable, will tend to make women lose hair a little bit quicker than they would see on something like Anabar. Also, the voice might thicken a little bit, um, which you may not see with Anabar. Or Primo is way more expensive. You always run the risk if you use an underground lab that they might switch out the compound and give you something that is maybe not suitable for a female. And yes, you, your money's not going uh, that long of a way if you spend on Oral Primo. Anabar and Oral Primo stack is something I've seen women use going up to competition. Serious female competitors will stack those two. Sometimes they'll add a little bit of Winstrol in there too for good measure to flush out some water. And they'll stack those three together. Not very common for just a recreational using female, but pretty standard practice for pre-competition, high-level competitors, females to just run small doses of the three of these. They all have kind of different effects in regard in a way like the Primo Bolin might be the better mass gainer out of Primo and Anavar. You could get on a pretty strict caloric deficit and as long as you're training hard enough, that Primo Bolin might help you gain a couple of extra pounds of muscle, even on a caloric deficit. As crazy as that sounds, you'll just burn more fat if you, if you push your body to that degree. Anovar, you'll get more cut. You'll retain more of your mass. But will it build that much mass if you're restricting calories? Probably not. Only steroid that we've known through bro folklore. I don't know what to call it. To bro science, bro knowledge. To build mass on a caloric deficit is the primo bowling. Some of the other stronger stuff, you, you need to eat enough to gain some mass on it. So... A pre oral primo for women, not bad, not bad. If if the female taking it is not prone to losing their hair, it should be a pretty damn good steroid. And if you don't suffer any of the side effects, hair loss, thickening of the voice on the primo, it may be a better option for you in your particular case than the anavar would be. I think a female that can handle oral primo without the side effects being too much, will be happier using the oral primo than they would the Anavar. 
the Primo just more mass, probably keep a lot more of that mass on a really strict caloric deficit and good strength gains. I mean, it's a good, good overall product. Another one that I have to t- um, add as well is T-Bowl, Toronto Bowl. And the East German female team, starting in the 60s, they actually ran uh, T-Bowl, and they were able to be very successful at it. Um, and it's been written, I'm actually looking at some articles now, that they actually used them from the 1960s all the way up till the end of the 80s, uh, while uh, the Soviet Union, USSR, was occupying East Germany. So that was their thing. So a lot of women, again, they're, they shy away from T-Bowl. Oh, I'm scared of T-Bowl. I'm scared of T-Bowl. Uh, but I think the T-Bowl, if you run like 5, 10 milligrams a day, 5 milligrams a day, start to start. I think if you're really, really hardcore, you're really, really hardcore and experienced, it can give you it can give you some nice results. So don't forget about T-Bowl. I think T-Bowl deserves an honorable mention on this. Very low dose on the T-Bowl. For a female, what do you think? Five megs, no more per day on the T-Bowl? Yeah, I'd start with five. Because for a guy, I know I've run 30 and I've gotten good results. So if I'm running 30, then you running five is good as a female. I'd be, I'd be afraid of um, females. I mean, with Anabar being available and Oro Primo being a possibility and even Winstrow being a, a good possibility. Uh, and then SARMs, all of that. I, I probably would be too afraid to advise any female to use T-ball, to use Turnable, at least any recreational user, you know, high level competitor working with a coach that has brought other women and made winners and champions on stage, different story, but just rec users, recreational users, just somebody trying to look good. Probably uh, I'd be, I'd keep them away from, from Turnable and I would advise them on, and of our Primo or even Winstrow or SARMs before I, I'd hit her in the ball. Just, just my opinion on females that way. All right. So speaking of SARMs, let's talk about SARMs. Best female SARMs use. He's a, he's, here's a good rule of thumb on SARMs. A lot of females get confused on dosages. If you go on forums and you read articles and stuff, I would, I would basically say for SARMs, if you just run half the dose that you see recommended for men, example, you see 20 milligrams recommended for men to use RAD 140. So for a female reason, 10 milligrams a day would work fine. Same thing with LGD, you see 10 to 20 milligrams for men. So with females, five to 10 milligrams will work fine. And also your size, if you're a hundred pound or 110 pound, very petite female, you know, obviously using a smaller dosage is all you need. You don't have to run a lot. So the exception to the rule is, I think, GW carterine. In that situation, because it's not a hormone, it's not hormonal at all in your body. So in that situation, running the full 20 milligram dose is perfectly fine. It's not going to affect you. So I think for a female, really, an LGD and a carterine stack, doing LGD five milligrams and carterine 20 milligrams. If you want to cut and you want to put on good quality lean muscle mass, I think that's, that's a good solid SARM stack. That would be my number one SARM stack for a female. If you just want to cut and just want to improve your endurance, just do carterine by itself. There's nothing wrong with just doing carterine by itself. So that would be my, uh, my choice for women. I think, you know, I think that that's very simple because RAD is, is, is a little more stronger than LGD. So maybe it's not so much of a good idea for a female unless you're really, really bad. It's kind of like the T-Bowl example we used. And then you have something like S4 androine, which is also a, um, a SARM, and it does cause vision side effects. So if you're – a lot of women are obsessed over their vision – um, more than men, men are just like, ah, screw it. If it screws my vision up, I don't care. Women are much more in tune with their bodies. They care more about their bodies. Men are more reckless. So as a female, do you want to want to mess something that causes vision issues? You may not. So just keep that in mind with S4, but SARMs are good options because of the low side effects with SARMs. And if you're using legitimate SARMs, you should not have 
the side effects that some people report on SARMs because they were using fake SARMs that were really pro hormone. So, Rick, I'll let you, you know, I'll give your thoughts on SARMs. Well, SARMs have less of the side effects that are undesirable for women when it comes to using performance enhancing drugs. You won't get any of the hair loss, deepening of the voice, you won't get additional hair growth, you won't get. Problem is with SARMs, and I've said this on the podcast many times, all these drugs are fairly new. We don't know what could and would happen down the line using them. Not like Anabar that's been around since 1964, 67. I mean, same thing with Primo Bolin. Since the 1960s, we've been using it. We know pretty well what's going to happen. SARMs, some of them have only been available for use for the regular kind of underground market for the less than 10 years. So saying that, that out of the way, I think for a female, Osterin and GW, great stack. I think that's probably one of the best SARM stacks anybody can use is Osterin and GW. If you want some more strength, LGD could definitely be thrown on top of that. Some of the other stuff like YK11, S23, I'm not really big on. I think if you're going to do that and go that far into it, might as well use some Anavar. Might as well just do it. It's it's just a, a better option. While Osterin and NGW and LGD have some have a decent effect on their own. I feel as though maybe uh, some of the other ones uh, are just weaker, weaker steroids. So that, that's kind of my my idea on it. I think I think any female doing good, doing making good gains on Anavar, we'll see comparable gains and progress and better fat loss. Definitely better fat loss. Stacking Osterin with GW, maybe throwing a little bit of LGD on top of that. Um, two good products from my store for women are Entuslin and Bridge. Bridge, you can find at needtobuildmuscle.com. Bridge product is excellent for women. Three capsules per day. One in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the evening. Helps your mood. Helps your pumps in the gym. Helps you just gain more mass, more strength. It's a good product. And then Entuslin helps so that the calories in your meals will mostly be stored in your muscles, become new muscle, and won't be stored as fat. So Entuslin, one to three capsules, about 30 to 45 minutes before each meal, depending on how many carbohydrates in that meal. Bridge three times a day with meals. It's a good product. Those are two great products women will see great effects on. And then you can throw some Anavar or Oro Primo or Osterin GW combination, I've said, or you could throw any different things on top of that. But those are just two. That's, yeah, that's my whole uh, spiel on SARMs on in women, I mean, you want to use some some good natural supplements along with the SARMs. And if you're going to go with YK11, S23, maybe maybe try that Anavar. Why not? So I have to add as well, Rick, uh, women produce their testosterone differently from men. For men, it's light excels. From women, it's ovaries. So PCD is going to be different for women. And when you're using anabolic steroids, for men, you know, it's going to shut men down. So men have to run a PCT to kind of give themselves a soft landing. For women, it's, it's different. So with women, the way you want to approach PCT is more organ health, more uh, stress reducing, because it can be stressful coming off. So those supplements that Rick mentioned, those are really good options for females in PCT. Don't just come off and not run something for PCT because there is an effect on your kidneys, on your liver, even though you're running something like oral primobolin, for example, and it's not liver toxic, it still affects the liver. Just because it's not liver toxic doesn't mean it doesn't affect the liver. SARM, same thing. They're not liver toxic on paper, but because we're running an exorbitant amount of, of the PED, we're not running it for therapeutic reasons, we're running it as a PD, it's still going to have an effect on the liver. And we've seen that from blood work. SARMs do affect the liver. 
So you definitely want to run the liver support when you're on it. And also in PCT, if you run liver support, it's doubly, doubly effective to do that. So I think herbals, herbals as well, running herbals in PCT for a female can really help because you may on cycle feel a boost in libido. And when you come off, you'll have a little crash where your libido comes back down and it's like, whoa, that big drop can really mess with your head. So I think running herbals and PCT, the Fidogia, the Tribulus, the Fenugreeks, the, the Divinol, all that, those herbs, you know, and something like Intugenerate, which has all those herbs, can really, really help you as a female. And uh, you can run, you know, you can run on three, four caps a day of the Intugenerate. You don't have to run the full five caps. And I think that you'll really, really feel better during PCT uh, by doing this. Anything, your final thoughts on that, Rick? Definitely uh, for women and to generate, it's a great product. Also, creatine for women, great stuff to use. L-glutamine for women, great stuff to use. I have a good creatine product called Ancient Strength in my store. Go to needtobuildmuscle.com. Take creatine, girls. You know, if you have a girlfriend, she's wants to get into some supplements, have her take some creatine first. She how she feels on that before she uses anything else. And for females, the Entuslin and Bridge stack from my store, perfect stack. It works incredible. You get some very, very good results on it. And you can throw steroids on top of that later on. So you can try Entuslin and Bridge, stack them together. Entuslin will keep you leaner, build more muscle. Bridge will give you more strength more size, more drive, use those two. And then you can, on your second or third bottle, throw a little bit of Anabar on top of that, throw a little bit of SARMs on top of that. You could run them along with your cycle. The Bridge is a really great product for females. It's an incredible product for females. We've developed that for men as a Bridge product that men can use in between cycles, something that'll give them comparable to some of the good effects they get from steroids without the side effects. So Bridge has ingredients in there to help you get a great muscle pump. Bridge has ingredients in there to help you just feel more motivated, more driven to hit the gym. Has ingredients in there to help your endurance. It has ingredients in there to also help you recover along the lines of a both psychotherapy style, just good herbs, strong herbs to help libido and help testosterone production. It, it was just a, we, it's a product we developed for men to take in between cycles. And over the years, more and more women have been using Bridge and they love it. It's just a great, great product for females as well. Some women use Bridge and don't use any steroids because they feel it just gives them that boost that they need. So I definitely Bridge and Entuslin ancient strength. If you're throwing some creatine in there, that's a, a, the, the female trifecta. If you're looking to you yourself as a female, or you want to help your old lady, your wife, your girlfriend make some more progress in the gym and you're not ready to let them take any steroids, take those three in a stack into slim bridge and ancient strength. And you know, that female is going to make some really, really good progress very quickly. You guys will be real happy with it. All right, ladies and gentlemen listening to this, we appreciate you guys listening. Hope you learned a lot. If you have more questions, you can hit us up, evolution.org. Steve, SMI, always available for you. Consultations, if you need them, off the site. If you have a question, post a thread. I will respond to it. Rick, how can they get a hold of you if they want to reach you? Go to rickyvrock.com. That's R-I-C-K-Y. V as in victory. R-O-C-K.com. There you'll be able to find my social. Just join. Message me anytime you want. Also, if you want to hit me up direct, go to rickyvrock at Gmail. R-I-C-K-Y. V as in victory. R-O-C-K at Gmail. Just hit me up. Any questions, any concerns, any content you'd like to see on the show. If you need a short consultation to help you figure out what kind of supplements from my store you need or what you should be doing with your cycle. No problem. Just hit me up and I'm always available. I'm always around. I'll give anybody a 15 minutes of my time if they really need it. All right, guys. 
This was episode 378. Talk to you guys next week with another one. Have a good one. Have a good one, Steve. Have a good one, guys. Require legal disclaimer. We are only sharing our experience from years of steroid use. We are not doctors, and none of what we say should be regarded as medical advice. Always check with your doctor before taking any drugs or starting any training program.